What's up, Topher? Welcome to the show. Welcome to our podcast. Um, bro, t- tell me everything about you. I don't know. I don't know if uh, my listeners know who you are, but if you have been around me in my car, if you have been in my office, if you have been in my home, my God, you have got to be getting sick of that Patriot song by now because that shit is on replay like I have never done before. That's Congratulations. awesome. Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, Topher. I am a six-year active duty Air Force vet. Uh, while I was in, I was a cryptologic language analyst, and I got out because I wanted to pursue music full time, which I'm able to do right now, uh, thanks to social media and other platforms. And like Kelsey said, the Patriot is not just burning down her house, but it's also burning up the Billboard charts. We are number three on the rap rap digital sales charts, and we also number four in R&B, hip hop, and we just hit number 36 on all genres for digital sales and yes sir it's, it's, it's been crazy I, I love it i love to see people excited about their country excited about you know just being proud of who they are and where they're from because you know for so long we've been beaten down we've been told that america is not great america is just a horrible place it's not treating people right and that has been the narrative and i'm tired of that narrative because i literally live in america and I'm tired of that narrative being pushed when I can see every day hardworking Americans get going out there. Is it easy? No. But is the opportunity yet there? Yes. You just got to go grab it. My God, Topher, I love your I love your enthusiasm and your willingness to, to chat about some of the hard topics. I've been following you now for a little while on social media and um, uh, my brand has been following you. And then I started a page and I started following you and I really started taking towards you when I started realizing that um, you speak about things that not a lot of people are willing to talk about on social media due to ramifications. And I am not a political show. I'm not a political person. And I I try not to talk on things that I am not educated on. So when it comes to United States politics, Politics. I only know what I hear and unfortunately we do know that media is having a bit of a um, an issue and a backlash towards honesty and so I do you know take it with a grain of salt everything I say because I am as I'm I'm as Canadian as it gets and I I don't even know what our own election is it's not that I'm uneducated and choose not to be it's I truly hate my own prime minister so I I have no I have no care to want to have his negative ass energy in my lifespan in my realm right now especially mm-hmm. coming out of COVID I don't need to hear his voice so um I do I won't lie um you know, on my birthday, I watch the election because it's fun. Uh, I watch your politics. I think they're entertaining. I think the rest of the world thinks they're entertaining. But co- what comes with that is is um, it's kind of sad. The fact that it's entertaining to the rest of the world and that mm-hmm. it's not being taken seriously for what's truly going on. You were involved. Uh, yeah very involved when it comes to your country and your countrymen. And I want to kind of start and and roll back to how you got into the military. What made you want to do that? What really brought that kind of light out in you? you, Can you mind sharing some of that? Absolutely. So I grew up in Kilmichael, Mississippi. Uh, Mississippi is at the bottom of all the states and Kilmichael is the bottom of all the cities in that state. So (laughs) Couldn't get much bottom. (laughs) Middle of nowhere. Absolutely. There was no hip hop scene. So me getting into hip hop was just just me wanting to just do my own thing. Uh, My dad, uh, I do have musical, you know, genes within me. My dad is a a veteran blues singer and guitar player. So he's really great. Um, But that's not what, you know, blues and and hip hop is not the they're, same. There's, they're not like comparable, bro. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I went to college and uh, I met my my wife. You know, during that time, and at, uh, I always got you know picked and selected by recruiters because I scored really good on the ASVAB when we took it in high school. And my mom never really really wanted me to join because you know she said you're gonna die. You know, <laughs> typical mother worries. And yes, I kind of listened to her, and then it got to the point where. I just wasn't excelling in college. It wasn't fast paced enough for me. The the what semester was six month long semesters. I literally give out around the fourth month. That's just I just I'm just done. It's, it's over you. with, and I'm, I'm I'm out. So I wanted to you know create some type of security for you know my future. So I said let me join the military. Uh, at least I can go there and see what they can teach me and et cetera et cetera. Went there. Uh, you know, got my job as a language analyst. Went to DLI for a year, where I learned where I, where I learned Hebrew, and what? that was exciting. Um, because oh, you speak Hebrew? 
a little bit. Um, oh, my Jewish side of the family is just <laughs> they're hitting it hard right now. I'm proud of you. Uh, it's a hard uh, language. Yeah, it, was, it was actually easier than I expected, because once again, what we've been what I hear growing up um, and what, what, what I heard growing up and what we hear all the time. Uh, you know, it's hard for a black person coming from this, you know, disenfranchisement. But when I went up there and actually just ignored all that and just worked my tail off, I was actually at the top of my class. And moments like that show that it really wasn't about where you came from. It's really about where you want to go. Um, and that's why I wanted to be at the top and be the best. And I was able to do that. So I just want to thank God for that. And from that moment, I just kept doing my, uh, my own thing and, I'm an active person. I, I pretty much feel like I'm self-diagnosed ADHD. So being stuck behind a computer screen, because <laughs> that's my job, yeah. um, 10 to 12 hours, uh, five days out the week is not the best thing. And also, once again, I was still trying to maintain my career as a musician. So I, you have to be active on social media, but I wasn't able to do that because I'm stuck in a skiff, um, you know, while I'm there. So you can't, your phones are not allowed. So I was that's like, right. I, I got to get out. I just got to, you know, take the chance and, you know, as Proverbs 18, 16 says, you know, your gift will make room for you and bring you before great men. So I just believe that and I just took it and ran off with it, you know, and I'm glad I did. So that's kind of how I got into the whole military thing. And once again, it just opened up my world because once again, we was in a, such a small place in Mississippi. And coming from an impoverished background, I didn't travel much either. Mm -hmm. I didn't get to explore or experience anything. So when I was in the military, I, I got to travel. I got to experience different cultures. I got to hang around people I never would have hung around <laughs> because I no just, chance. <laughs> it's just no chance. And it showed me that America is nowhere near as racist as we try to make it be. And there are bigger issues at play than than racism. I I love your take on it. Um when you when you talk about your military background and your family and and how you kind of come from that that blues uh, upbringing when you when when music was introduced to you i'm assuming it was when you were quite young what is it that really stuck with you with with music that made you want to keep moving that forward and pursuing that as part of your thing because it's one thing to listen to i mean i grew up on country music i grew up in the sticks with woods and bears and deers and those were my friends and I was terrified of them all but that's where I grew up and I, I my dad my daddy and my mommy are long-haul truck drivers I've been down to Mississippi um like a few times hey. now I traveled I've been everywhere in the states and so when I hear you talk about like that small town feel and how we give this perception you know that things can be worse because people never really get to be outside their box and see kind of what's going on um so yeah, when it goes back to music and things like that, with that, did you find that your dad really was a big part of that, bringing you into it? I believe so. Uh, they actually tried to get me playing the guitar when I was really young, um, and I tried, I attempted, but it just never, I just never felt good playing the guitar. I think my first guitar actually when I was five, I, I believe they bought me my first guitar. I was five, you know, and. You know, to give credit to everyone that was involved, so I was in the mail course. We had a community mail okay. course I was a part of. Um, so I had that for years. And I think when I was 12, we even got invited to sing in D.C. Oh, snap. Um, so You're already going to D.C. You're already on <laughs> your sorry. way, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> this time I went by myself. But uh, before, they had already prepared me for it. So we was up there. We sung. So I just I just always... Um, um, participated in anything musical like I said I was just drawn towards it and um but my dad still plays to this day so for me music is a universal language and I feel like that's where we connect across cultures mm -hmm. across nations and to know that God has gifted me with something to be able to do that mm -hmm. I just kind of feel like it's my purpose and seeing how people are reacting to the Patriot, reacting to my other songs and, and, and being drawn towards me, it just confirms that. So that's, I, I can't stop at this point. Um, no, you the can't. success is coming, not be, not only because it's what I'm supposed to be doing, but because I'm uh, been dedicated towards it. And that's the only reason why I haven't been as successful previously in mm -hmm. um, prior years, because I didn't take it seriously, right? So I, I put it out, 
I really didn't think about how to build relationships. I really didn't go out there. I just kind of like, well, if I make great music, it just happens, right? That's that's all. It <laughs> no, no, it doesn't. Um, <laughs> I thought, and if yeah, I, I would have known that. that, if I would have known that, I'll probably be in a different place. And what was a um, an epiphany moment was when I saw the same artist I actually did music with in college. No, while I was in the military reach levels i think um pale is his name but he was actually performing at Lollapalooza. um so that's how big he got but there was really no difference in skill or talent it was just the fact that he never stopped making music the focus and that's when i was like oh that means if he can do it i know i can do it i just gotta make sure i never stop see that's what it is and it's that that attitude of never stop never quit and never give up and i think when you're talking about it i like how you talk about music and how it's a universal language. I, I totally agree on that. I think a lot of our listeners have a, um, we have them from all different walks of life, but I know they, you know, they're all in agreement that music is that one thing that can bring people together and it can be the soundtrack. Like, I love it. Like soundtracks to people's lives are like some of my favorite things because you can learn so much about a person based on a song that they listen to just in, in, in that small little bit. Like I, I won't lie. My mom is the whitest how do i my mom raps with me it's it's awesome she's legit i used to fight um professionally when i was younger and we used to go to tournaments and my favorite rapper of all time and and people used to tease me when i was in elementary school because like i straight up wore a bandana and like had like the tearaway snap pants and i used to listen to eminem on repeat like it was no tomorrow like Like, I thought I was him, okay? I'm not going to go any further with that. But my mom, like, she, my mom listens. Like, she's not the demographic that you would think would listen to rap music. But she's getting in the car and she's, you know, she gets a bob going. It's like, it's because it's not about what it is. It's the fact that it's music. And music Mm -hmm. itself brings so much calm and so much hope to a lot of people. And I think that's why I was drawn to you and wanting to speak with you because it's about finding a connection especially in today's world just trying to find something together to show that we're all human beings and that we're all connected and that we don't need to treat each other the way that we're treating each other and music is such a beautiful thing to bring it together yeah yeah music is awesome and uh i was gonna say eminem was my favorite rap of all time oh what um yeah it's i mean He's just the goat. The guy has sold so over good. 300 million records. Like, yeah. like no one's going I don't see anyone eclipsing that. 300 million records. No. Uh although once again, I might not agree with him politically in the way he's going, but, yeah, but that's, that's not okay. going to stop me from appreciating someone's art. And I feel like now even Spotify removed my song. I don't know if you I heard saw about that. that. Oh yeah, no, I saw that. And I, cause uh, Spotify has our podcast and I was, I, w- I went on after I saw your post and I was like, and then I ran out of my office into my girlfriend Tally's and I was like, they deleted his song. I was like mad for you. Cause I was like, how do you finally get something that is cracking, you know, cracking the seams open and the attention is going to it. And people are finally like, yes, you're like, I'm getting momentum. And then they're like, nope. Nope. It just and still no response. I've I've oh, reached really? out multiple times and you know, Spotify for artists. I've submitted the, the correct, you know, contact mm-hmm. form. Nothing. Um, I've talked to them on Twitter and they keep well, Spotify cares because Spotify for artists apparently don't talk to people on Twitter. Oh, cool. But they keep telling me to submit the form. I say, Hey, I've done it. That's like someone get with you. I say, It's been yes. almost a week. You guys, I'm tired of this back and forth. Um, I'm starting to think you did it on purpose. I, I can't think of, of any other reason it because purpose. it was doing well. And then just so happened on the 6th when the rides went down uh-huh. to DC, it's off of Spotify. It's still up on every other platform. So if everybody wants to go listen to it. Oh, trust. Free. We'll be blasting it. We've been blasting it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's disappointing. And once again, if we get to the point where you're silencing the creativity and the creative arts, Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's definitely Nazi Germany type stuff. Is that's dangerous? Uh, you know, that's dangerous because we should have that freedom to express that, especially when it's so um, woven into the culture. Correct, and I mean that song. Like specifically speaking about that song. Like I mean, I've listened to your other music. I'm not gonna lie, it's really good. There's something about this song. I don't know. For me, 
I'll, I'll, I think, like, I'm, I get goosebumps when I talk about it because here, <laughs> God, I'm so white, it hurts. Um, I'm just sitting here going, God, I hear myself talking and I'm ridiculous. Tally and I went for a walk on Saturday, okay? And we're in the car and I'm like, every Saturday morning we go for our walk in the woods because, you know, we're white West Coast women. And we have our coffees and we're walking. And I'm like, listen, I w listen to this song again. And I want you to really listen to it. Because I'm the type of person, and so is she, where when I hear something I'm obsessed with, it gets put on repeat. I have to find the lyrics. I have to learn every word so that when I'm in the car, I can like say the right words because I feel like that's what music is owed. It's owed the right words when somebody works that hard on it. So there's a beginning in that song. And I don't know where you guys found that. Um, it sounds yeah. very Nordic. It sounds very Scottish. Whatever that is, that to me hooked me in a way I can't describe because it had that feel to it. You you put feel into that music. And then right off the end, I don't know why, but it's that whole like for once, I don't know, this sounds really stupid because I'm not really one of those people, but uh, that whole like, not just talking about the brothers, but also the sisters in the military. And every fucking time that part comes on, I get goosebumps. Every goddamn time. It doesn't matter if I listen <laughs> to that song on 20 repeat. I'll get goosebumps at the same parts every single yeah. time. You nailed something with it. And you weren't graphic. You weren't, let's burn this shit down. You weren't, like, you were just, like, mm -hmm. honest and open. And you spoke truth that people struggle with. Yeah, so that was the Marine Rapper's verse. Uh, he did a really good job. And uh, when I first decided to write the song, the, the lady you're talking about is Natalie Dread. She you can find her music. Um, yeah. She go by she goes by Natty Dread on um every um platform. Okay. But uh she did an acapella version on TikTok which went stupid viral, and I saw it, and so I did oh. I did a duet where I song next to her and, and and she loved it and everybody else was loving it and then I was thinking like I really I don't normally do this right I yeah. normally don't sample. Um, vocals or anything like that but I just said I just want to try it so I put it on my Instagram I said hey any producers looking to work with me um, all you got to do is flip this and then send it to me and yep. you know we'll see you can go from there so Killer Vic was the guy who produced the track me and him have worked together along with the Marine Rapper and many other military vets um, with the Sounds Like Freedom album we put out 2019 okay I believe 2019 we put it out and he he's phenomenal. He's he based out of New York. And so we was like, um, so he, he said, I, I got you, bro. Once again, I didn't tag anybody. I just said, hey, just do it. Send it to me. Yeah. Because I want all because you get better results when people do something voluntarily. Uh, yeah. And that's what I wanted. So I was like, so he sent it to me. He said, hey, bro, I flipped. I'm going to send it to you. He sent it to me. I was like, whoa, this is this is crazy. This yeah, is nice. It is. So then I was like, OK, let me write to it. And then when I wrote to it and I put it on TikTok, it went viral. And everyone was like, yo, we need a full song. And I was like, well, let's do it. So I hit Vic up and we kind of, you know, of course, we're just working out the intricacies and making sure it sounded right sonically. And then I was like, I need someone that's super patriotic. And I said, you can't get anyone more patriotic <laughs> than the flat American flag jacket wearing. No, Marine MC, Rapper. <laughs> the Marine Rapper. No, you can't. No more patriotic than that. So I was like, of course, we homies. Um, but I said, hey, bro, come on, hop on this. And I think it was that Friday night where, when I finished up getting everything straight with that, uh, with, the, with the song, make sure he mm -hmm. can hop on. We put out a Saturday days because we do Saturday days with Space Force because we do have a trio, uh, rap trio group, hip hop group. Um, so he finished that verse and I was like, oh, I waited up to about three in the morning for mm -hmm. him to send me the verse. It wasn't until three in the morning I was about to go to bed. That's when I got the verse from him. <laughs> and then I was like, yes. So I sent it to the uh, mixer who was actually overseas. Um, oh, wow. But he sent it to me. And well, I sent it to him. He got it back to us that morning. And by the time, yeah, by noon, my time, we had got the song back. And I had the video, lyric video uploaded. Right now, the lyric video has over a quarter million views on a lyric video, not just not um, a video you know, not the music video but just the lyric video and then the audio just by itself has a hundred thousand plays i, I you know um, what's really funny is i'm i was just looking at my phone i'm like i wonder how many plays i've actually had on my own phone because i i'm curious about it now because i like i'm i will i'm not exaggerating i will literally leave a song on once i find a song i love and then it'll just sit on repeat 
until I know every word, I know every hook, I know what's coming. There's just something about respecting music for what it is. I'm not a musician. I I sung a little bit when I was younger. You know, I dabbled mm-hmm. in that. And then after that, I was like, oh, cool, puberty. What? And then, <laughs> so I, I really enjoy, I, I enjoy the work that went into that song. But for like whatever reason, it's not that all rap music needs a kind of hook like that with her, but she, right. she brought something to it that... For whatever reason, maybe it was just me, the right time in my life, there's a tone to her that clicked with me emotionally mm-hmm. right away. And for whatever the reason, as soon as that happened, it just, the opening to that just really just, I don't know, you ramp up in that song. It's almost like a techno song where you're like waiting for the beat to drop, but yours just ramps up in a rap song, which I didn't know was possible to do that way. So I was, I was just so... I was so excited about it. I wanted more of it though. I'm like, I want to know. I'm like Googling, wait, what's this music video? And I'm like, hold mm-hmm. up. There isn't a music video for this. How yes, do it's still brand new. We will be shooting a music video this week though. So it, it is coming. <sighs> missed music, my Evite. Music video is it's coming. Okay. I missed my uh, bite. This week. So just, just suffer a little bit longer. It won't, be, it won't be too much. What's that saying? Uh, suffer in silence. It's normal, right? That's what, isn't that what we're used to? Hurry up and wait. Just... Yeah, just just hurry up and wait. I promise you, it's gonna be really great. But shoot with my guy Austin Alex, who's a, a big uh, YouTuber as well. So he does nice. really good, really good cinematography. So we're gonna be shooting with him. Uh, we we finish up the storyboard, and I'll be flying out to Cali probably Thursday um, to get this done. So uh, just just be patient. But like you said, uh, is I think so. I lost my mom around this time last year to cancer. Oh. I'm so um, she sorry, had, uh, Topher. Glioblastoma, and it, it's it's fine, and you know it, it just went really fast. It's probably the the, the most deadliest yeah. form of brain cancer out there. Um, and when I heard her say, "My mother told me," like right? that's what really it takes you back to when you was a kid. It reminded me and said, "Hey, you know, my mother, my mother told me all kind of things when I was a kid." So like my my mother told me, you know, someday I would buy, you yeah. know, and buy could be anything, you know. Mm-hmm. And when you're talking about galleys with good oars and sails to distant shores. So I'm thinking, you know, you'll be rich, you'll be famous, you'll travel the world. So that's mm-hmm. how I translate in, you know, today's time. So that's kind of how I went went through that. And yeah, and it just took me back to a moment and it just hit deep. Like you said, the words cut deep, even though it's an old, um, I think it's a, a, a poem that was from okay um i think the 15th century something like that Mm -hmm. it Um, sounds uh, very much like that yeah um the original version that's on vikings not the original version but a version on vikings when they sing is completely different Mm -hmm. um it's more of like a a war chant almost yeah but uh this one she sung more like just first of all her voice is just magical we just go ahead and put it out there yeah it's unreal (laughs) it's unreal (laughs) Um, but yeah, she's sung it more like a lullaby type. And that's why I was like, yeah, um, yeah. I got to do something with this. And I, once again, she doesn't agree with how the song has evolved and and how many people are using it, right? Because she yeah. doesn't understand because she's from Scotland and she yeah. doesn't, and she's not involved in politics, probably just like you. Um, and she definitely doesn't know anything about American politics. Yeah. But there are people, you know, I, our day and age, once they find out that you do anything with a conservative or somebody, mm-hmm. then you automatically an enemy, no matter See, what. See, that's unfortunate. Just... That's unfortunate. Especially because if she's in Scotland, whereabouts is she in Scotland? Edinburgh oh, area? Most people she, are. I don't know if she mentioned specifically, um, but she's definitely in Scotland. And, um, and yeah, once again, it's unfortunate because... I knew, and I made a video about her being harassed because she hit me up because she said people were saying that what? the song, yeah, she said people were um, saying the song was used to be violent and do all kind of craziness. And I'm like, no, 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 it hasn't. And I said, matter of fact, I have way more videos of people actually never listening to hip hop, all of a sudden become a hip hop fan and things like that. And, and people using it and crying to it. I was like, to yeah. think someone's going out here and committing, you know, violence is, is ridiculous, but not everyone has tough skin, especially if they're not sure what they got to be tough about. So I feel bad for her, and she's distanced herself from the song, which is completely fine. Yeah, uh, but she still give her blessings regardless. Yeah, that's it's a be I you know that that's unfortunate to me. I actually served with um 
the black watch from scotland and mm. um uh, when i was overseas uh as infantry and those guys just let me know where she lives i'll i'll send a gang of guys over there to look after her because those guys will make sure that nobody touches her over there and nobody talks to her that way because they these guys they don't necessarily know u.s politics but they they're if there's one thing that i'll tell you is you know the the royal marines and the black watch they they respect you know freedom of speech they respect human rights and they respect people's choice to choose what they want to do and mm -hmm. to hear that she's being you know attacked like that all the way over there for a song that is nothing but beautiful beautiful in so many ways and it like i said like it cuts it cuts me in a different way and like it, it hits everybody in a different way but reg irregardless it makes the community talk and it makes people right. who might not have had a conversation have a conversation so the fact that it's being used in any other way but a um, a, a bridge or uh you know a, a conversation starter is just really unfortunate to me to hear exactly. that oh i'm sorry yeah. to hear that love that's yeah um like i said i've we we spoken face to face well not, of course virtually, FaceTime. Um, mm -hmm. um, facetime so yeah and i i stress the same thing it's like look i've never called for division i've always called for unity um but people right now they don't care right i always tell people um what i what what has been pushed as unity is conformity and mm -hmm. they want you to conform to them in order to unify it's like no we're not gonna conform just to your you know so to what we believe to be craziness you know like i will unify together and respect you and you respect me but it's getting to the point where people won't respect us at all and um so it's 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 it's, it's troubling it's irritating but it's just it's the times we're in and i'm just gonna stand up stand proud you know like the song says yeah you're not you're literally not going anywhere and i and i don't think anybody expects you to when so you're you're married and you got kiddos yep, yep. okay um, so you got questions i got a five-year-old and a one-year-old two daughters oh two, oh you got girls oh yeah. you're lucky you're lucky lucky bro <laughs> you're lucky now until they get teenagers and then we'll have this conversation again and i'll be like i'm chilling because my boy is just in the dirt and your girls are going to be like slapping guys away yeah. get that out of here but no the reason i ask is because you know you're you're a public figure you you speak a lot of truths to people how does that affect you know mental health and your family and like your your wife because i mean it is like this is polarizing the world and it mm -hmm. is causing people to break up all over politics it's, it's really heartbreaking yeah. to see what it's doing so how are you guys coping with that uh it's i, I pretty much just said that I can't control what others do. Correct. I can't control how they hate. Mm. But the only thing I can do is control what they hate on. And so I'm gonna make sure they hate on me for being an upstanding guy, a person that wants to back the constitution, that take care of his family. I wanna make sure that he preserves a future that's gonna be beautiful for everyone. If they wanna hate on me for that, then you no, know, by God, let them come. And, but like you said, you know, uh, my wife <laughs> might not be. She didn't come from the sticks like I came from. Oh, the where's sticks. she from? Where's she from? Um, her military background. Her okay. Uh, so she traveled and um, she was actually born in Germany and then okay, um, yeah. they came back to the states when she was five. So she she's pretty much had it pretty pretty nice, you yeah. know, throughout her life and childhood. So she really didn't have to fight fight for anything. Uh, but I I kind of show her it's like, look, I can't go back, you know, if. I, I'm not a normal person, you know. I may have thought I was going to be a normal person when I when you first started dating me, you know, which happens because people change as the years and come. Evolve and, and evolve and yes, mm -hmm. of course, you know. Matter of fact, when we first met, you didn't even understand what I was saying because my <laughs> you're my southern. I know I grew up with you guys. <laughs> so my southern draw and everything, so and I had bad. a speech impediment and all that. So you you didn't even understand what I was saying, but now yeah. everyone knows what I'm saying loud and you know loud and clear and uh it, it's it's a little frustrating at times and challenging but uh like i said you know she she's tough and she's resistant so you know um i always give her thanks for putting up with what's going on because i always think back to you know uh coretta scott king right you know mm -hmm. we always think about martin luther king but 
What about Coretta? Was she did she have the same resolve as Martin Luther King? Did she know that he was going to be in this situation when she married him? Probably not. She just probably thought he was a genius and he was a great pastor and love her yeah. husband. And next thing you know, he's leading the civil rights movement and he's, you know, I mean, they attempted to take his life multiple times. Oh, yeah. He's in jail. You no, know, I think he got arrested over 26 times. So wow. you're talking about someone that had to deal with that. And while you're arrested, yes, it's a great thing, you know, because you're fighting for freedom. Bless you. Um, Thank you. But what ends up happening is now she's stuck with the kids, you know, yeah. so so many things you got to think about. It's like, while you're doing all you're doing, she's stuck doing other stuff and supporting um, yeah. But also her life and children are in a danger because I think they did try to bomb their house one time. Oh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, everyone was inside. So that's what I thought about. And I think about that all the time. And but she stood she stood right next to him um, to the bitter end. And to me, is it just takes a certain person. And that's why I don't. Um, and that's why I tell people, you got to be careful about who you plan to spend your life with and who you're going to have by your side, because mm -hmm. you're going to need a, a true person. Um, that's going to, you know, have your back. And like I said, I'm just grateful for, you know, like I said, we, we work it out as they come. Um, and eventually it gets to the point where it's like, cool, you know, you get your personal escorts and you can fly where you want to fly. We can take trips whenever, because, you know, yeah. the benefits of the labor will be coming yeah. in. Yeah. And, but right now, and yeah, it's rough. You know, what I'm saying? you gotta, you gotta have, you gotta have somebody that's willing to, to what's the word, dig the trench with you. And, yeah. uh, you know, you know, dig the trench starts that starts the plumbing that builds the house that builds the family that carries, you know, that carries yeah. on. And that's that idea that you have to have. Like you said, you got to have a true person with you, but you also got to have somebody that is going to be willing to take, you know, what the public's going to say, the knocks, the all the other comments, like you said. She's the one with the kid that's going to be with the kids. You know, she's the one that's going to have this stuff on the side and all of these things that she has to look after and also be judged and looked at in her family. And and so that's why I always ask my guests, like how you guys deal with or girls, how you guys deal with, uh, you know, mental health within your family, because it's such a big thing for me um, after I got hurt and, and getting to the point where I'm at and hopefully continuing to recover. But but also being a voice for mental health in the vet community, because so many of us struggle from PTSD and TBIs and, you know, just chronic injury, lost limbs, like the the conversation about veterans is being had, but it's not being had enough that you know, the dents aren't being made in the suicide crisis and things like that. And I think when people see other veterans like yourself who, you know, have that that belief that as long as I build a strong foundation and I work hard and I continue to work hard, things will pay off. And it's obvious it's happening. So, you know, people value your opinion and what you say when it comes to how to cope with things. And so that's why I ask that. And um, especially nowadays, like with children in this environment, I mean, you got a five year old. How are you guys like dealing with what's going on with her? To be fair, you know, she she doesn't know too much what's going on until it gets to the point where, you know, it's just unavoidable. Yeah. Um, but uh, I, we just try to make sure that we remain stable in her eyes, mm -hmm. um, that we make sure that, you know, make sure that we look like a team and moving as a team in front of them, because once again, that's important. Um, but uh, like I said, you know, we just, you know, we, we keep God first in everything we do. So we always just praying here, praying there. And, and I think as long as you're talking about it, that's good. I think w what happens is so many people get to this point, they don't talk about it, and then that's when it goes bad. But mm -hmm. ch having challenges and always bringing stuff up is a good thing. It's healthy, right? It's mm -hmm. the communication. is like, this suck. I, someone told me this. I don't agree with it. Cool. I don't agree with what you don't agree with. But at least we're talking about it, and we know where each other stands type thing. So I'm uh, anybody out there, just talk to people. You know, I know the Marine rapper does, you know, daily lives with people as vets that come in. They just speak. is. That's me. I'm just a communicator. I just want people to talk. And mm -hmm. I've, I'm always down to have the conversation, no matter how tough it is. Will we agree to disagree? Or I don't know, maybe you changed my mind. I don't know. But that's, mm -hmm. I'm going to be there. And as long as you are there, then things can go forward, I believe. Yeah, as long as you have that that mindset. And I think that's what's happening, at least from, from a... From an outsider perspective, what it seems like is happening is that people are just unwilling to have a conversation, um, whether it's due to the fact that, you know, it's a, pol a political reason, it's due to the fact that people are just like straight up dicks, it's due to the fact that people are uneducated and unwilling to be told something different than what they've been taught their whole life, which I understand. If you're ingrained in an idea all the way from childhood, it's hard to then 
look outside that box because that is attached to more than just the idea. It's mm -hmm. how they live their life, how they work, who they help, who they donate their money to. Like there's so much more people forget that's attached to your, your idea of who you are and what that means and what the self is and what you believe in and when you start to talk to people about well that's wrong or that's not ideal no wonder people are going bananas it's because you can't just look at somebody and say you're wrong it doesn't work that way yeah. and yeah so i you, you guys are definitely in you guys are definitely in an interesting uh point in history it, it's, it's a stressful point in history like I, I i think about it and like i rub my head because i'm like stressed about it like just even thinking about it uh I'm going down to Washington in a couple of weeks to meet up with some some vets to do some stuff to hopefully help my healing process. Okay. And, um, you know, it's it's an intense experience. And I will say, you know, I've I found strength in your music and it's helped me on my journey. And I'm hopeful that it continues to help others on their journey, um, whether it's it's you know because of the beats whether it's because of the lyrics whether it's because of something that you said in a post that resonated with them either way your music resonates um i'm i'd be curious to see what you're gonna do coming up i mean we, we you got plans you're in time you gotta have people gotta be reaching out you've got to be getting hit up uh yeah um yeah i'm getting you know people even claiming me now it's like oh man i know oh. billboard chart an artist it's like oh uh, <laughs> i actually asked this this is like no cap um, guy tagged me on, you know, Facebook, share my post, said, hey, now I can say I know Billboard chart artist. And then I said, did you get it off iTunes? He literally clicked the the laugh button on it. He didn't even respond like I did or did. He just laughed at it and just that was it. And I was like, why y'all being so fake? Don't I don't want anyone celebrating my success if you obviously can't spend a dollar yeah. to help me with my success. It's, it's just a dollar. And the song is amazing. So I don't want anyone jumping on the bandwagon, but as far as possible features, possible features, uh, Tommy Vex from Bad Wolves. I don't know if you know what that is, um, but yes, you know, he's going to be independent from the band starting today. Okay. So we're going to, we got to, we're working on a song right now. We're going to work on a song and that's going to be awesome. Uh, Tom McDonald, I'm probably going to try to reach out to him this week. Mm -hmm. Busy man. So I don't know if you have time for me, but we'll see. Squeaky then wheel I got gets the grease, words. brother. Squeaky wheel. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get my fans to tag them. That's what's up. I'll tag hey. the shit out of them for you. <laughs> it's like, let's go. You know, independent artists taking over. Uh, and that's the thing. Like, I didn't want to reach out to some people until I actually accomplished some things on my own. And that's why that's why I tell people all the time. It's like sometimes it's just not the right time. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's and there's no fault, but either your own or whenever God wants you to elevate. But um that you know the album's gonna be out probably around my birthday i haven't set official day yet but my birthday's in february so okay. toward the end of the month oh it's so, not that soon so an album will be I, i'm i'm working hard i'm finishing up uh some features for bryson gray's album that he's gonna do he's gonna do a, a double album release nice so i'm finishing that up today and then after that straight album mode and that's gonna be released in february and we're gonna i think we discussed it's just gonna be Every week in February, a conservative artist is going to release an album, and we're just going to all push oh, it. Oh, snap. Look at you guys. <laughs> you guys are like, take it, slap it in the face every week. Just shove every it down week. the throat, bro. <laughs> every week. Y'all going to know that we are here. We're taking over. And and to me, this is where the cultural battle is fought right here in music. And like I said, I'm glad to be a part um, because, you know, we've had WAP and everything. We've Literally, the industry has sold us um, money sex fame riches and everything else drugs okay. violence for decades and they've profited off of and of that and we have suffered regardless of what you think what you hear you know they say the eyes and ears are the gateway to the soul mm -hmm. so if you're hearing stuff all the time then it's probably not going to be anything good for you especially if it's all negative so what we want to yeah. do is you know change that you know and that's why we're going to do we're not going to ask anybody's permission we're not asking anyone's permission that's why we're not signing to no major labels or nothing we are coming in taking it by storm do you think that um there could be a point where you'll be able to just create your own label yeah but Is i don't it something you would want to do <laughs> i don't know if i want to create just a label for conservative artists once again that's that's more the business side if i wanted to of course 
but I'm more like just empower yourself. Like right. I can teach you how to do it. I'd rather be the person that teaches how to do it. It's like if you want to come to my seminar, you want to come here, listen to some right. of the people that went before, you know, look at sound charts. You can track all your data across. You, you can literally track your song on social media, charts, radio play and everywhere mm-hmm. just off this one website. Why do you need a label when you can get the the back end behind everything that's going on? Yeah. So it's like, I just want to empower people because I, I've seen what the industry has done. I don't really want to benefit off anybody like that, or I won't say benefit. I won't, I don't want to exploit their success and their talent. Um, but if I can benefit you know, by teaching them or something like that, that's cool. But it, it's really no reason to sign with a label. And that's what we see right now is happening between Spotify and major labels because mm-hmm independent artists are killing it because we don't have as much overhead yeah so the royalty rate for us is cool <laughs> because yeah because we're not paying, we're not paying <laughs> people. and they're mad because to them it's not enough right but they can't just up it for one and and not up it for the other correct so yeah it's it, every, everything's coming to a clash anyway it really is especially in the music i mean nowadays you you hear so much about what people kind of went through you saw that that whole spin off i mean i didn't know very much but what happened with kanye and his you know putting all oh, yeah. his contract information and you really start to see very quickly what that industry can look like i mean um, i'm dabbling in it right now and i'm learning you know certain people it's just they have to be involved if you want things to move forward and if you don't do it right it just it won't happen the way you want it to happen and sometimes you have to make that sell your soul weigh the options unless you get lucky and you start working with people who just happen to be like-minded and fortunately i've been i've fallen into that i got really really lucky with my team so i'm one of those rare ones and it sounds like you are as well if somebody came to you with a contract though it depends what it is. Right. Um, seriously, seriously, it depends what it is. I'm looking for something so specific that yeah. them entering the agreement probably won't be worth it. <laughs> it's, 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 it's that specific, you know, um, because I don't need a distributor. I got DistroKid. They handle all right. my distrib- distribution. I only pay $25 a year. So That's it's so like, incredible. I, Coleman's I don't, just I don't, nodding <laughs> his head going, yes. <laughs> I don't, I don't need anything else. Um, if you're talking about graphic work and artwork and, um, you know, social media, I actually do that. I actually worked for an independent label for two years doing digital marketing where I, you know, so the artwork you see for the Patriot, that's that's what I created. So a lot of this stuff, I just do, I do, I do it on my own. And on top of that, uh, as far as like I said, I could track everything. I'm, I'm a yeah. smart individual. Business relations, I do it myself. It's like, hey, yeah. man, what you think? You know, we talk about percentages. Percentages, we know how to use sound scan to get your song yeah. out there to be tracked. So everything that the label literally does for an artist, I can do. Now, booking agent, possibly if someone wanted to work just on something. Just a couple people on the team, like just adding a couple yeah, people, make like your life a manager, smoother. Yeah, yeah, manager, manager eventually, because my ADHD is horrible. <laughs> your life will get <laughs> easier. Trust me, yeah. your life will get easier when you have a manager that just goes, I need to talk to you about this. You go, oh, I totally forgot about that. Thanks, man. I'm like, yeah. It's bad because I, I promise you, I, I hate keeping up with stuff. And um, I hate notifications. I'm one of those people that I hate notifications. That's why really? I don't like scheduling stuff. <laughs> Bro, your stuff is blowing up. Your phone must be. Do you just turn it off right now? I don't uh, I don't have my notifications on anything. Um, so I, and when I go in Instagram, that's when I can see the messages yep. up there. But that's it. But I don't I don't have the notifications on anything. It's just it's, I'm just trust me. TikTok's worse. Like I have a hundred, you know, six thousand followers, one hundred five on Instagram, oh, wow. but I got like seven hundred and forty on TikTok, forty thousand on TikTok. So it's like I don't have TikTok, man. I can't. I don't. <laughs> I, I don't even, that? bro, I don't even know. I don't even Twitter, I, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. I don't Twitter on Twitter. I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I don't know. Okay. You're going to have to help me because I, I am of that. I'm that type of person where I'm like a true introvert. Like I stay inside mm-hmm. my little shell until I have this other piece of Kelsey that comes out. Okay. And she's like the mannequin that just like stands there is like, hi. I'm the voice box and it's not, I'm not comfortable, man. I don't know how you get mm. that. Like I went from being in combat boots on the front lines in the dirt, being comfortable there. Then I went mm. to being a mom who just got spit on and hit all the time. Just constant, just taking spit to the face, toys to the dome. And then now I run this company and this podcast, but 
people expect me to put myself out there, but the, here's what I'm running into. People, I'm not all their cup of tea and they're finding out. <laughs> How do you get comfortable with that? How do you grow your pot? Like, how are you growing what you grow? I mean, shoot, man. I, I sit there. I'm like, 624. Oh, yeah. That's right, bro. <laughs> it like crushed me because oh. they made me start. A, they made me start a Kim and Marco. You got to have got to have Instagram for your personal page. Yeah. I was like, but bro, I don't know how to do this stuff. Like, I got a team of people that deal with my business, but it's like, I don't know how to deal with it in here. People mm -hmm. wanting to know me. I don't know how to deal with it up here. You know, yeah. that's a trip. I need help with you. Help it's, me. Actually, I've I've grown stronger because of others. I smile all the time now because people have told me they love when I smile. That's it. They say I have you a do. You do. You're literally smile. such a teddy bear. I'm sorry <laughs> if you're not watching on YouTube right now. He is got this. Just you're making me smile. I'm not kidding. <laughs> I just. I, I don't like my smile. I got bad teeth, oh, bro, uh, crooked please. and everything. And I, I promise you, I, I don't like to smile. But it was TikTok and everyone who just kept saying, I don't know what it is, but you lighten up our day. And because of that, I became confident in that. It's like, you know, and that's why I tell people, you have your, you know, your self-esteem. Yeah. Also, you have others that can pour into that. And, you know, even if I don't completely agree with what they're saying. If I can smile and it brightens up anyone's day, or if I can do something and brighten up their day, like I was wearing the, the Santa Claus hat running around being banana. I, know, I, <laughs> I, I saw that. that. <laughs> if I can do that, my, my job is done. So, right? you know, oh my goodness. I, I think that's where uh, I just learned to be co comfortable with it. And I feel like I'm, only reason I'm, I, I feel like I'm a mixture between extrovert and introvert because. Mm -hmm. My ADHD makes me an extrovert I'll because that, yeah. I have to kind Move. of stay moving. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, I like just chilling. I, I'll literally just be chilling in my, by myself sometimes and, and I don't care. But at the same time, I want to be around people. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, because of my ADHD, I get bored. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's a weird combination yeah. of just uh, personality and, um, and just behavior. And that, you know, has got me to where I am. But I know that I cannot quit. That's all I know. I, all I yeah. know is I can't quit. Smile and can't quit. It seems like that's like your thing, man. Your your honesty. I when you when you continue on with music, because you said you're 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 not active duty anymore. No. Nope. Okay. How long have you been out? Three years. Oh, Going so on you're, four. It'll oh be shoot. Four you're, you're you're a newbie still. You're a, you're a fresh guy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry about you, bro. You're just loving that beard life now, though, aren't you? Oh, I love it. Just love it. never have it. to shave, man. Never have to shave. I always felt bad for you guys when I saw that. Just every day, just... just... Like, man, I'm over here. A grown man can't have a beard, man. You no. know, it's voluntary, so I'm not knocking them. But I'm just like, come on, man. Yeah, I hear you. No, it's interesting when you watch. Uh, I, I've been fortunate enough because of this podcast to be able to interview a lot of like uh, special forces guys, a lot of uh, team guys. And it's so funny, too, because you talk to them now and it's like you, they get on the podcast. I think there's only been like a couple who are like been clean shaven because they're in businesses now. Mm -hmm. But the rest of them, like yeah. you get on there, they click on their Zoom and there's like chip wood, plywood. They've got the beard and they're like, hello. I live in the woods and you're like, bro, we need to talk about what's happening with your situation and your face, because it's one thing to have a beard, but the whole lifestyle change, like complete, it's a trip when you watch that. So you're new out. Yeah. So what made you get out? Just you, you were like, I'm ready. And then they let you out that easy when you had all of that education with languages as well. They didn't just be like, you're not going anywhere. You're ours. Well, um, I don't think they had a signing bonus for my um, slate when I was getting out. So okay. um, that's one thing. Uh, two, they kept switching up the rules. I understand that we all get paid the same regardless of our job in the military. I get that. Um, but some of us really do work harder like oh, objectively yeah. than others. And so I was like, and they just kept adding more to our plate and, we, and there's no benefit for it. So I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I gotta get out. Um, like I said, I'm a. I like to be around people, and you know, being secluded for so long, and we can't really talk because people want you at your desk type environment, right? You have so to be it's, it's on. Yeah. So I was like, I, I can't, I can't deal with this, and I got out. And I know a lot of people think I'm older, but I'm only 29. I know everyone's like, man, well, you're, you're a baby. You're almost the same age as me. 
<laughs> oh my god you're such yeah. a teddy and you're a baby you know what's gonna happen you're gonna get even bigger and then they're gonna make little make america great again sweaters with teddy bears and it's just gonna be you you're gonna be a teddy bear because you you're a, you're a human teddy bear who's is still a child it's it's perfect you you have that smile that like can light up a room but if you just put like a make america great hoodie on and then a hat and then you make a tiny little teddy bear that shit would sell and then you press the hand button and the patriot starts singing actually shut up you've got something don't you I oh got my god <laughs> i knew it <laughs> 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 real, real pl this is not mine but Who this guy that? actually <laughs> he actually makes this as a as a brand where he has a lion he has like a zebra a bear and all kind of stuff <laughs> i i see this somebody's already on to me somebody's in my yeah. head stealing my ideas already i sorry that's <laughs> real funny that that was just sitting right there that's i appreciated that thoroughly yeah you but know just pull I mean. out the rack of hoodies over here You're like excuse <laughs> me which one color do you need the version in i have it it's already done. Yep. Merchandise is ready to rock. No, but so yeah, you're still, I mean, you're 29. I, I, I'll be 32 this year. So we, I was in, I was in when I was younger, like real young kind of situation, oh, no. like 18. I was like, oops, oh. I'm going to join the army. Like it was not, yeah. I'm a smart, smart individual, as you can tell. But no, with your yeah. job though, I would think they would want to hold you guys. I mean, to when you do those testings in the military and things like that, you're not exactly like you said, some people work hard, some people work real hard. So for example, you've got the grunts who are mopping the floors, but then you've got guys over here that speak multiple languages that are, you know, listening to things and writing things down that are important that need to be passed on and they're getting paid the same as much as this. I can totally respect, I can respect that. Um, I do notice that though, after serving alongside other countries, learning how poorly you guys are paid. You guys are like one of the worst paid militaries individually. Mm -hmm. I had no idea how low your payroll was until when I was deployed and we were just sitting there one day and I looked at them and I was like, what do you make? What do you make? Huh? What do you make? And they're like, <laughs> I make this. And I was like, that's it? A, like a month? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh snap, that's what we make every two weeks. And like, I'm a lower rank than you. Like, that's depressing to me. So I I always wonder how people stay in in the US military because unless you're doing something super uh, gnarly, you're not making, I mean, you're not. Nah, it's, once you get to a certain rank and if you ain't riddled with debt, it's not bad. Right? But you know, um, but that's rare, right? <laughs> a mm -hmm. lot of people with debt and a lot of people don't want to put in that much time. And also with mine, uh, when we rank, right? So mm -hmm. when you go for, you know, say you want to go for promotion, we don't compete against the lower people. We could compete against people within our job. Okay. So while the dummies are competing against each other, <laughs> right? all the nerds and smart people are competing <laughs> against each other. So the competition is, high. is way more stiffer and they get a pass. They get a hard pass. And it's, it's just like, this is why I'll be looking at them like, bro, all you had to do was mark Yes, they gave y'all two questions. I know, just two. It was just, just, you know what I'm saying. Like it was, it was not tough at all. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that's where I feel like, uh, it kind of failed. Uh, if that makes sense. And although you can play the game, right? I'm not saying you can play you the can. game and win. You can totally do it. I just, it, I just didn't want to play the game anymore, and I got out, which is fine. Like I said, I enjoyed my time, did my six years, learned a lot, grew a lot, and a lot of those uh, skills, professionalism, I have taken with me. It has gotten me to, you know, into many rooms and into many mm -hmm. places. Matter of fact, I was a VIP at the Lips and, you know, when we was up there at DC, which is unheard of. Like, I've gotten to the point where I was just walking around and people was like, Tofa, what are you doing out here? I was like, oh, I'm trying to find an interest. Come on, just hop, just hop with us. You know, just that's what it was. Like, I'm to the point where it's just, Tofa, where you at? That's when they see me and I'm not where they think I should be, they, they're concerned. It's like, yeah, like, hey, whoa, whoa, back it up here, team. We've spotted you. You're not in the right place. They're already like four fingering you. You're like, I'm not in anymore. Don't yell at me like that. And I just be, once again, I, I'm not a, you know, I just go with the flow. I'm not yeah. up here raising hell because, you know, my following, nothing like that. I just walk and I promise you, people like, Tofu, where? Where were you going? <laughs> it's like Damn I'm just trying it. to get up here. I'm not even sure if I got VIP. And then right. they was like, "Who, who, 
who sent you the email? I said, Maggie, Maggie, here, gone. <laughs> it's like gone and just it's it's just the weirdest thing. Like I'm not used to um being a celebrity. Get used to it, brother. It, it it's 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 a weird feeling at times, but uh people love it. I love it because it's just, you know, once again to know that someone uh supports what you do so much they're willing to invest their time and money. Yes, um, like the hoodie rack you see that was custom made. A guy just hit me up in my DM. It's like, hey, bro, I see your hoodies hanging on nails. <laughs> yeah, I got to fix it. that shit for you, bro. You can't have that anymore. <laughs> I'm going to fix it for you, bro. So he mailed it to, excuse me, he mailed it to me and everything. And without just, like I said, no cost to me, a guy made some Patriot, um, the Patriot sneakers on the I saw that post. those. Um, Sorry, custom I got excited made. there. Sorry, I got excited <laughs> there. I saw those. Those were cool. Custom made. I Once again, um, it's, it's crazy. And I see why. So many celebrities can save money because people oh, don't, they don't buy nothing. They don't pay people send them stuff on this. Bro, do you know how much like like budget I have for just ha like sending stuff? Because people don't want to pay for anything anymore. And it's like, I get at a certain level, but 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 damn, also like like we're trying to I'm trying to blow up too, but like you're digging on my budget. Like chill. I know you want some shit, but like give me a second like i respect people who don't ask for stuff i will give anybody yeah. who doesn't ask for stuff stuff until they're blue in the face but the second you expect something of me no because i think everybody should like you said your song's only a dollar why can't you well actually you want to get into this let's get into this for a sec Topher. Mm, mm. your song's only a dollar in america your song is a dollar 29 in canada Bro, where's my 29 cents? <laughs> okay. So you obviously did not ingest for the rest of us that are above the meth house going, what the fuck is going on with your country? Can you not at least give me a break on the price, Topher? Either way, I paid for it. I paid for it on all the platforms. I don't really care. It's that good. I will pay for your shit on all the platforms. I got no issue with that at all. But Oh, no, always. But, but it's like you said, it's like when people don't, ask for things people are just there to support you and people are just gonna send you stuff like that i respect people who are like listen i'm just trying to do something good and some and if my life changes and i can affect people in a positive way then i'll mm. do it but i'm not like out there i don't like people are out there like asking for things you know what i mean and you're, you just don't seem yeah. like that guy no nah, um i redirect people to support because people ask me all the time i'm like well we want to shoot the music video if you want to help the budget, you know, if you yeah. want to help in case we get something extra here, you know? Yeah. Um, but I don't just sit out here like, Hey, y'all need to pay me for this, pay me for that. I just, I love that. I don't know. Cause even with the song, right. I can, if someone ever want to ask me, and if you are one of people listening to, they ask me all the time, told for, I'm a, I'm a streamer. I'm this, I want to make a video. Do I yeah. have your permission? I'm like, of course. As a matter of fact, I don't even, I don't even have my copyright on YouTube because I want people to just, do what the they song. want with it. Just do what they want with it. And I say, all you got to do is just credit me so they know where to go buy the song if right. they really love it. But that's it. Like, I'm just use it. You know, I, I think that's what it's for. It's like, and I just, just been that person. All right. And um, now the album come out, you know, of course, you know, you know, it's going to be probably the same thing. But I think uh, I probably have it copyrighted then because I don't want nobody to re uploading the entire like, album. Yeah. You know, and, and stealing from that way. But as far as the Patriot, I might even put up the instrumental by itself. Because oh my god please put it up self. please 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 i'm one of those people don't know no, no. i write to okay i got i gotta get so, i gotta stop getting so excited about stuff i get excited when i get when I, I find something i really love but if you put please put up the instrumental or just send it to me i won't put it up but just give it to me because i write and when i write i write to instrumental music because if there's lyrics going i can't think instrumental music and i will fucking just put send me that send me that send me that please i'll pay gotcha. for it bro I, gotcha. I will I will respond to this email. Yeah. Um, and, and oh, I, it's I so good. That, uh, it's so email. good. But yeah, it's, it's, trust me, the song is great. I love the lyrics, but just listening to the instrumental by itself, right? oh my God. Like, in here, it's bro. beautiful. Yes. It's, it gets you in a, you know, I say in here, but you know, my husband used to say when we first met that my heart was black and dead inside. And, um, cause I got, I just, I just, 
we're still working on some shit. Um, I mean, I this the 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 deep dark blackness is still working on some shit. But it, people have that like um, when you come home from overseas, you're real numb. A lot of people are real numb. And he used to tease me about my black heart. And every once in a while, if he sees me like listening to something or we're watching something, and you can see like a crack and like a little tear, he'll. It's alive again. It's like she it breathes. Feels. It feels. <laughs> it feels things on the inside. I thought it was dead. And so, you know, that's one of those songs. Oh. And I was like, I like straight up his office across the street. I like remember when that, the song came out. I, I drove over there at lunch. And I was like, listen to the song. You should listen to the song. I really like it. It's one of my favorites. And he's like, of course, you found a military rapper with a military song singing about the military. <laughs> of course you love it. That's like the definition of your freaking life um uh, i i you know i i do have a bajillion i could go fruit with you for hours man but i want to respect your time i think time is money and i think you, you're valued and i think that uh i'm gonna try to cut this a little bit short because i i know you got stuff to do and you got a world to change i want you to know that we at brass and unity up in the yankee non-yankee country up in the snow-filled land of Canada, we support the shit out of you. And it's we don't support you because you're political. We don't support you because you're about talking about, you know, rights and freedoms. But we support you for the person that you are, the music that you put out, the service that you put into this country, uh, into, I say this country, because I served with the Americans, into our countries. And, and most importantly, the positivity and um, the mental health stance that you have about just keeping one foot moving forward and, and doing the things that you know are not only going to benefit you, your family, their mental health, but hopefully impact positive change on this world. So our kids, and I say our kids, cause ours are the same age, can grow up and really look around and have a conversation with somebody they might never have had a conversation with. And to be able to start that. And um, I'm super like, blessed and stoked that you even answered my email. You were quick. My team was like, yo, Topher emailed back. And I was like, what? <laughs> that quick? That big of a guy uh, with a following? Yeah. Of a maybe, maybe I need to delay it a little bit. Maybe, right? Maybe no. Just, just be like, you know, make them seem like I'm just really busy. Just, just you know, like tours and everything. Super just, busy. Know. I just, just don't. You know, let me, let me see. I may be in Barbados, you know. This I'm a weekend. big deal now, Kels. Like, I'm a big <laughs> deal. I can just get on your podcast whenever you want. Do you see how that voice goes? That goes the second somebody tells me no. I'm like, oh, is that... Really? You're too cool for me? That's cool. Okay, cool. Call me in five years when I'm bigger. It's fine. Like, I get real cranky about it because I'm like, I think there's value to conversations that people might not have had. I think there's serious value in other people's opinions, whether I agree or not. I think there's value in conversation. And when you stop conversation, that's when problems start to happen. Um, I'm just, Absolutely. bro, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for you coming and chatting and I want to have you on again and I want to I I follow your progress. I want to send your wife a bunch of jewelry. I'll, I'll hook you up because you, you deserve it. You guys are doing the right things in the world. Um, and and let, let, let my listeners know, like, what can we do? How do we get your music? Where do we find you? Tell me all the things. All the things. So I have a website, tophertown.com, T-O-P-H-E-R-T-O-W-N.com. Or you can find me at Topher Town Music on any platform. Um, just just look for me there. I have links. Uh, my music is under Topher. That is my mm -hmm. official artist name. You can find me on Spotify, uh, any pretty much any music platform. Um, like I said, support me that way. Uh, Venmo, same thing. Just just visit my website. Plenty of ways to support. Mm -hmm. And we're probably going to probably start pre-sales for the album sometime in February. So be on the lookout for that. I would love to come back after the album is doing really well. Yes, so we can see what that is. Um, but yeah, so thank you guys for supporting. Thank you guys for supporting Kelsey um, and everybody else. Uh, I'm. It's been a blast to come on here to talk about the song. And it's funny too, because even though you reached out to me before mm -hmm. I made the statement, but I was saying for me to have a, a hit, this song has been number one on iTunes for the hip hop charts for it's number three now, but the last couple of days it was like for five days straight. I have had no conservative or right wing media reach out to me or do any write up about the success of this song. This song has zero cussing in it. It's the I only know. song in the top, only song in the top that has no explicit warn, explicit warning next to the song. 
um, and it's tearing everybody up. And no one wants to talk about it, which is cool, right? I just warn them, if you want to take the culture back and you want to change culture, you have to deal with people like, like me. I don't care if you like rap or don't like rap. Rap is the number one genre in America. Mm -hmm. So you're going to have to deal with it. Yeah, deal and with the it, later bro. you wait to help elevate and push us, the longer it's going to take to actually get things done. We're going to keep going with you or without you. But right? I will call you out on it. And I will say, we tried. You had the opportunity, but you slept on us. Yes, sir. You slept on it. You can't sleep on Topher, guys. Listen, you got to check his music out. Um, whether you're conservative, whether you're fucking liberal, whatever, you're black, white, green, gray, brown, orange. I don't give a fuck. You need to check out this guy's music. He is doing something incredible uh, with music. Let's leave it like that. He's a musician yep. who's talented, who is trying to unite the world together to be a better place. So thank you, Topher. Please tell your wife, I said, thank you for being a total badass. And first off, after being in a military family, also marrying a guy in the military, that's a brave woman right there, sir. And so I uh, acknowledge that, that it takes a team, it takes a household. And um, thank you again so much, Topher, for coming on the Brass and Youth Podcast. I'm so stoked to have you, man. Thank you. Peace.